Hasiem, kvīciem, kvīca cicas, aiz sapkasiem, hīls. Nonovoj skvēl. Great crater, we thank you for coming together. We thank the wisdom of the elders and their teachers. We give gratitude for those who have gone before us and learned the ways. We give gratitude for the wisdom that we can share with each other. We say, Haj Kasiyam. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Wise Folks. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about the importance of food and nutrition, and we're gonna go out into the community and see how elders are enjoying food with a twist. In addition to that, we've got some great guests. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, enjoy your beverage, enjoy the show, and we'll see you in a bit. joining me here today on Wise Folks. My sister and I have a cousin, Margareta, who lives in Sweden, and she watches our show through the wonders of the internet, and Margareta particularly likes the name of the show Wise Folks. My name is Isabella Ostman. I am one of the Wise Folks here, and today I have with me Jen Cody from Foodshare. Welcome, Jen. Nice to be here. Uh, we are going to be talking about healthy eating for, for seniors, and Jen is the executive director of Food Share, Nanaimo Food Share, and this is an organization that runs two programs here in Nanaimo. Uh, one of them is the Seniors Food Legacy, and the other one is the Setting Table Project. Now, Jen, what are some of the challenges that are facing our seniors in trying to eat healthy? I think for many seniors, then uh, cost of food is an issue. So seniors are often on a fixed income, and it's a challenge for them to have enough money for food, particularly with the rising prices in housing. They often, um, as they are aging, then their mobility or their transportation is much less. So being able to travel to where they are able to purchase foods or um, activities in the garden might be less for seniors as they're aging. And so they're um, ability to get to where the food is can sometimes change and um, physical changes affect seniors so their health might be affected they might be having challenges in, in um, standing and in, with arthritis or they might have changes in their dentures so all and changes in their sensation so uh, how they enjoy food changes as they're aging as well so what are some simple things that are easy for seniors to make that are are healthy and nutritious. Well, I think that Dan and Dan will have something really exciting to be sharing in just a few minutes. And uh, uh, many th eggs are a wonderful uh, protein foods for seniors, and other protein foods are also quick and easy for seniors to make as well. Um, and uh, for seniors, then um, nutrient dense foods, so whole foods, foods that have not been processed very much. Um, are also really good things. And fruits and vegetables, really good and quick and easy mm -hmm. foods for a lot of seniors to eat. And we have so many fruits and vegetables available to us here. Perfect for this time of the year. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now, what are some things that we can do to support our loved ones in, in helping them eat more healthy? So seniors uh, being able to eat with other people. Food is a really social thing, and people usually eat better, and they usually eat more when they have opportunity to eat with other people. So that whole piece around um, collecting with other people and eating in the, as a community is really important for seniors. And uh, for some seniors, then timing when they're hungry um, is really important. So some seniors might uh, f have changes in their sleep patterns or they might have changes um, in when they're actually feeling appetite. And so some seniors, it's important for them to 
sometimes not to skip meals and also important for them some, to have snacks as they're going through their day. So sometimes smaller portions, but um, more frequently can often really help seniors maintain a healthy body weight and to get enough nutrition. And for seniors, one of the things that is a change, I think for many people as they're growing older, is um, learning more about what foods are, have, uh, num are strong in nutrient dense, so foods that have a lot of nutrition that come with them. Um, seniors have a smaller plate that they're working from and when they have a smaller plate it means they have to choose more carefully the foods that they're eating so that they get all of the nutrition that they need for their bodies to be healthy and to support their health. We are now going to be going to Dan and Dan who are cooking up something good for us in the kitchen. Wow, welcome back. This is awesome. I love this. It is good. You know, I was a little panicked because I was thinking I have to cook something in five minutes. You were thinking the same and you had this fantastic idea. Tell me a little bit about it while we're doing it. Of course. Remember our first segment, how women are just better than men and I mm -hmm. thought of this recipe first. <laughs> Anyways, yes, so yes, what, this, what, the, what is really fantastic about this is not only are avocados extremely healthy. They are. Um, the good fat. They are excellent good fat all you do for this recipe is you cut your avocado now you had a fancy way of pulling this out yeah, <laughs> like that. that boom yeah I no know. fingers that's quite amazing anyhow so you have your avocado and uh, I just need a napkin here and what you do is see it's a little bit lopsided it just moves around too much so yes cut the, cut the little back my knife oh, yeah. is not as sharp as yours Put yeah. it there. You gotta be careful because the dull knife cuts your fingers. Does it? Yeah, no. it does. Well, this, no, how's that? So where did you learn, where did you first hear this? Do you know where I found this recipe and I tried it and I thought it was amazing? It was Dr. Oz. I went, oh my God, I love this recipe. This is so cool. So I tried it at home and it just came out absolutely amazing. And all it took was an egg. Show what you do with the eggs. Let me just cut the bottom off this. Right. You uh, just, you know, just so you can level off your avocado. There you go. And now the only thing you do is you crack an egg. All right, let's, let's bring this up here. So let's crack the egg. Now it's gonna run over. Let's hope your holes are deep enough so it won't run over. Okay. Try okay. to get a large avocado because if they're really tiny avocados, it's just gonna spill over and your egg will be mostly on your plate and you'll just kind of have a I don't know, an egg so with a plate. Is this like a breakfast thing? This could be breakfast, this could be lunch, this could be dinner, this could be, this could be anything. I mean, this is just, <gasps> oh, oh man. Can oh, you be a little more careful? We got with scrambled the eggs now. Well, now, I, now I gotta find a spoon. Okay, I'll try to be more careful with this one. Well, there's no spoons in here. Oh, here we go. All right, that one's gonna hold. Well, here. That, the bottom one, okay. <laughs> So we're gonna try and scoop this one on. Scoop it on, add your salt yeah. and pepper. So salt right. and pepper, so, simple, just simple. <laughs> oh, for the, what are well, you doing? Dan, Dan, well, look, Dan, it, you know. Well, it's like you're chasing a, a. Here, just bend it over, stick. Oh, now my other egg fell out. <laughs> okay. Dan, help me here, okay. there, there. Ah, look at that. That's perfect. Look at that. <laughs> now, where's your salt? Okay. Now, this is healthy salt. Now, right. you must be wondering what this looks like. It actually looks pretty good when Dan doesn't tip it over. So, we got some Himalayan salt here. Himalayan salt. There we go. All Put right. We only got a couple of minutes here. Do we? We only have a couple? Okay. Oh, you know what? It's hot here. Then you stick it in if it's hot. I'll cover it. Yeah, I'll take the burns. So stick it in your toaster oven, just toaster oven. You Woo! don't need a whole oven. Stick it in your toaster oven anywhere from five to seven minutes. Leave it in there and then you pull it out of the oven with <laughs> gloves on, of course. But of oh, course, I've had some time for this to cool off. Yeah. So not to worry, I am not burning. So, wow, thank you for the cleanup. That and is so sweet. And to the magic sweet. of cleanup, well, that's the first I thing know. you gotta learn how to do when you're cooking in the kitchen. Especially with Dan. I mean, sure. <laughs> well, it depends what Dan you're talking about. <laughs> that is true. So right. look at this Bam. amazing, amazing, amazing after. Then you want to impress somebody. Are you ready? Yeah. You just take these little guys 
you just display them. Oh, they're still a little warm. They're still a little warm. They And even cold, they taste amazing mm. cold. And then you can just scrape this off and eat it. It is so good. So you can eat this, you can eat yeah, this. This is still that. good, this is still good. So let's just do the impressive garnish. You right. brought some beautiful. So, so if you're serving this up, and this is important when you're cooking by yourself because you can make this. Yes. But what I think what is important about cooking is you can take something like this. Oh, excellent idea. You can add a little salsa and a little bit of fennel. And this is wild. I got this. I found this. Oh, it grows everywhere yeah. on the island. Amazing. Oh, oh, this is so impressive. And there you go. You have a beautiful, healthy meal with protein. You got your juicy vitamins from your avocado. I love it. You're ready to eat. Yeah, I am. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, thank you for helping thank me. Thank you for showing thank you. me this Well, you're very recipe. welcome. I hope everyone else enjoyed it. It's yeah. a simple recipe. It's a simple five to seven minutes in the toaster oven and you're done. You have a healthy meal. You have a wonderfully healthy meal. All right. Welcome back to Wise, folks. I'm Kevin Wagner and I'm here with Gloria. We're standing in the community garden at Nanaimo Food Share. Gloria, you've been involved not only with uh, a number of things going on here, but a kind of a new venture for you. You were talking to me earlier about video production. You bet. About a year ago, I joined a seniors group uh, learning about making videos and regarding the stories of seniors and food. And mm -hmm. it was all mentored by Paul Manley, the documentary maker. And I came to the first meeting thinking, oh, I'll just get a bit of information, not really thinking I was ever going to make a video. But here I am a year later, and I tell you, I am all in. I am learning editing with Final Cut Pro. Who would have thought it? <laughs> sure enough, that's quite an undertaking. And I suppose for a number of the friends you've met, you were talking earlier as well, you're saying it's created quite a, a family, a close-knit group of people. Oh, we, uh, yeah, bonds are strong. We have... We get together every Monday night for a potluck dinner. And uh, with that project, we spent hours and hours together. So we really like each other too. And uh, every video, we made seven videos all together. Oh, wow. And um, each video was chosen by one of us as the one that we wanted to focus on. And I think there's a couple of videos going to be shown soon, which is one about community gardens uh, with Donna Lee. And then the second one is about uh, the market and uh, Larry Whaley wanting to have a year round market and having uh, that happen. Sure enough, because we associate these markets, these farmer markets so often with spring and summer weather, but the opportunity to extend that year round will be quite an undertaking. That would be something else. Oh yeah, yeah. And I tell you, through this group, uh, I have learned more about the market and the availability of the food there. Um, I've learned about bees and the importance of honey production. I've learned um, about the good food box that happens being given out. I'm volunteering at three more places since I started this video group. Well, sure it's enough. It's a great place. Yeah, and it extends so much beyond more than just a community garden or video production. It's, it's quite an ensemble effort or event that goes on. Yes. Isn't that something? And I'm 77 and learning a new a new field in video production which yes. is no easy feat by any means Isn't that's that something? right yeah. yeah oh remarkable yeah. well thank you so much for joining us gloria that's uh, that's some interesting information regarding that it's a pleasure kevin thank you <laughs> again we're here with wise folks we're at uh, the nanaimo community garden at, at food share i've been speaking with gloria and uh, we'll send it back to studio now well i came here for the first time about four years ago I came from Alberta and I'm just retired and have always really enjoyed working in a garden. When I was a small child, I worked with my dad in the garden. Quite different gardening from Alberta to British Columbia though. I live in an apartment, only have a balcony, so I'm limited to what I can grow. So I got connected here and it's just literally changed my life. I mean, because we, we grow everything, we eat it, we have a community here, we stop for lunch and share uh, gardening stories, recipes, and it's just a wonderful community to stay connected with. But not only that is, it's great exercise. We come here all year long, 
December, January, we're in the garden doing something. Garden always needs us. We eat live stuff all the time now. You know, it's not about a package or a can. And for me, I just feel healthier. You know, my wellness is uh, it's just amazing what it's done for me to be in this garden and with the people that I've connected here in this garden. It's part of my life now. And it's a learning experience. Every day I come, I learn something new. We have people that attend this garden that, that are just genius in the garden. Can and anybody come and help you? Yes, we just love having people come on a Wednesday from 11 to 4, just come and join us. We have a work board and you can do anything from gardening to just sitting under a tree if you feel like it that day. <laughs> and I'm doing a project now with those pails over there because we have all these pails and no handles. So I'm repurposing how to make handles for all these pails because our gleaners will be using them to be picking apples and, and pears and plums and, and all that stuff. We get all that resource too from the gleaners it comes into community kitchen or, and to community gardens here. So uh, it's, it's a never ending resource and it's free. <laughs> That's what I like about it, it's free. We share everything that we have in the harvest here and when we harvest. And uh, let's say if there's six workers, uh, volunteers that day, we split it six ways. If there's 10, we split it 10 ways. And of course, in September, August, we have lots uh, even, you know, to give to other people and give away to people that need it. So there's always a good crop of vegetables coming out of our gardens. And we really care about people. Like if somebody doesn't show up on a Wednesday for a week or two, then we wonder, well, where, where is that person? What's happened to that person? So it's more than growing vegetables. And for me, I always say I'm closest to God when I've got my hands in the dirt. <laughs> Learned that since I was a child. But community gardens is probably one of, one of the most important things in my life right now because it's, it's my well-being. It's my goodness. It gives me nutrients. It gives me... a something to do every week and it's a social aspect for me really. If you would like to get involved with Community Gardens just look it up on the website Nanaimo Community Gardens .ca 250-816-4769 that's GROW. Anybody can come and get involved we just love to have new people come. I'm Larry Whaley. I'm the president of the Island Roots Market Co-op. We run this summer market, the one on Saturday and uh, one during the winter. So I was um, just hanging around the house wondering what to do with myself and uh, I've always been an activist, a bit of a social activist. So when Occupy Nanaimo came up, it just was natural for me to go and look in. A lot of them uh, mentioned that they wanted to farm and uh, it occurred to me that uh, you can farm, but if you can't sell your product, you can't live as a farmer. That got me thinking and working with other people about building a winter market. And that developed into the concept of a year-round farmer's market with all kinds of community activities associated with it so that people can have a place to socialize and uh, producers can be assured that they have year-round markets for their products. This particular market on Wednesdays uh, started uh, before I was involved. I think it's on its 11th year now. And it's, it's been going and getting stronger and busier and more successful year after year. So Island Roots is now part of this particular market and sharing it with, with these producers, many of whom will wind up in the permanent market once that's set up. Yeah.
My uh, motivation, I suppose, is to do something for myself, but I have two young grandchildren that live in Nanaimo, and it's fun to, to think that I might be able to leave something for the, for the grandkids. Local food, of course, uh, doesn't travel. You know, you're not bringing it in from Peru or Colombia or uh, the United States. Uh, it's all grown right here. That's one thing about this market. It's, you know, the people who are here selling it, they're, they're involved in the process of make it, bake it, grow it, or catch it. That's the rule. If you want to get local and you want to reduce the, your carbon footprint, this is a good way to get involved and do it. We want people to come and enjoy themselves, have a good time, and relax. Uh, bring the kids. Saturdays we've got the balloon guy and the face painter. That's all part of the creating of a good social atmosphere for folks. If you want to be part of what's going on, we'll, we'll be starting a membership drive soon and we'll be looking to do some uh, market development work and there's lots of room for people to get involved and volunteer. And as a senior, you've got time, you know, and, uh, and many seniors have a lot of experience and could really help out in a lot of organizations like this. Basically, just go online to our website. We're at uh, islandrootsmarket.com. Follow the link there for contact. Send an email to the president and uh, we'll find a spot for you. On a day like today, it's, it's really hard to beat. The weather is great and uh, meet lots of people. The company's good. It's terrific. Welcome back to Wise Folks. Once again, I'm Kevin Wagner, standing here in the gardens. We spoke to Gloria earlier. She had some wonderful stories to share with us regarding some film production. We have the, the good honor of having Paul Manley here with us. He's a local documentary filmmaker and held a very played a very big part in what Gloria was telling us about earlier. Yeah, it was a, a project where I mentored the seniors, trained them in video production, and then mentored them through the process of making their own videos. And so they decided on the content and, you know, I just helped them through that that process. And the, it's the setting the table project is all about uh, uh, sharing knowledge, sharing experience, sharing expertise, and, and also what seniors are involved in in the community and trying to engage other seniors to be involved in those things. So, you know, Donna Lee invited people to come down and get involved in the community gardens, and Larry's inviting people to get involved with the market. Uh, we had a video about Ingi making fermented vegetables and the health effects of that. Uh, the Eden Gardens video, which is about uh, dementia patients and, and the uh, connection between food and memory. Mm -hmm. um, the the Bee Man, which is about Theo Frederick, who's you know in his 80s and he's still a beekeeper since he was a, a little toddler, you know, and, and shares his experience with the community. He's, has free workshops, been doing that for 25 years. Well, and that was one topic that Gloria spoke about. She said she learned so much about bees, so much about a variety of topics. She said there's been seven films and video production in general. It just, it's been a learning experience, a massive one by the sounds of it for Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually what I love about making documentary and educational films is I'm always learning something new. So Well, and a very simple term you used earlier when we were speaking, you talked about knowledge sharing. That was the, the foundation, the basis for so much of what goes on here. Yeah. Well, Absolutely, yeah. Sure enough, whether it's food or diet, which is the the content that they're choosing, like you said, they chose their own content and food nutrition was at the heart of that, but yeah. they're learning far more than just that, certainly. Yeah, and there was the connections, like the self-advocates, uh, a group of uh, people with diverse abilities who are involved with the good food box and cooking out of the box, and that's, you know, nutrition pro programs and connecting people to good nutritious food, which is really important, right? So. Absolutely, and connections, I think, is a big part of what we talk about at Wise Folks with uh, the senior members of our community. And yeah. although this is specific to where we are here today, this can be something that might be available to members of the community across the island. Yeah, like yeah, these kind, of, these kind of things, if you watch the videos, you'll see these kind of activities going on all over, 
right? And so that we're just highlighting things in our local community and people in our local community, but of course you see this everywhere. So. And hopefully an opportunity for, for members to maybe reach out to something like this in their own community. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's great, yeah. Paul. Thank you so much. I, uh, th that's interesting. It was interesting to see Gloria's reaction, how excited she was, and then to, it's just uh, you know really something you guys have created that's really really having an impact. Yeah, we're going to be doing more training and I'm going to teach them how to make videos with iPhones. Oh, fantastic. So, you know, anybody can do it. Oh, sure enough. Yeah. Well, we're, we've been meeting with Paul Manley. He's a local documentary filmmaker. He was uh, the gentleman that Gloria spoke about earlier. And uh, thank you again, Paul. And uh, we'll be right back again, once again on Wise Folks. That is such a great crew over there at Setting the Table. Thank you very much for that. I'm Teresa Ostman. I'm in studio today with Cheryl Prince. Uh, just really pleased to have Cheryl to, uh, with me today. Uh, Cheryl, as title is? I'm a registered <laughs> holistic nutritionist. <laughs> Thank you for that, Cheryl. Uh, just we're great to have you here. Uh, Cheryl you. is also a licensed uh, practical nurse and she is a co-owner of a biodynamic farm here on Vancouver Island. And on top of that, she is a faculty member of the Canadian uh, School of Natural Nutrition, uh, which is uh, based in Nanaimo and in Victoria. That's uh, correct. Welcome again, Cheryl. Um, you're here to talk to us today about seniors and nutrition. Why is it so important for seniors uh, to have proper nutrition? Well, I think part of the reason it's really important that for seniors to have great nutrition is that they are automatically going to be at a decreased ability to metabolize their nutrients. Uh, as we age, our body does not absorb nutrients the same way as they did when we were younger. So it's vitally important now that they get proper nutrition. And um, obviously nutrition has a lot to do with uh, some potential diseases that, that have come on earlier or later in life? Absolutely, there's more and more um, proof for studies showing now, uh, one recently by Dr. Burns, um, Redstein that came out of Victor, um, Van, sorry, came out of the United States that is showing that Alzheimer's disease could be really, really impacted by nutrition and even possibly reversing symptoms of Alzheimer's if caught early enough. Wow, what kind of things can we do potentially to, re, uh, to reverse Alzheimer's? Well, one of the things, first of all, is we look at Alzheimer's as now being labeled as type three diabetes. So the most important thing we can do is manage our sugar levels. Um, secondly, we want to eliminate any allergies that we have going on. Uh, as for example, we could have a hidden allergy for milk, dairy, casein, or we could have an allergy for gluten. These particles of protein go through the blood-brain barrier and increase our risk for inflammation in our body. Wow, that sounds, uh, that sounds very scary and it's, it's amazing that really by making some simple food choices we can uh, help prevent Alzheimer's. Um, we can definitely slow it down and there is, they're now looking at 36 different components to Alzheimer's for it actually manifesting the disease and a holistic nutritionist looks at 14 of these situations to be able to hopefully decrease the amount of amyloid plaques that are being built in the, in the brain. And the areas that we look at are, we look at good thyroid health, we look at, the, of course, the blood sugars, um, stress management, especially looking after stress. It's a new thing. It's the, the studies are coming out far greater now to show us that stress is more detrimental to our health than actually even smoking. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> amazing. And most of us at, at, at all ages are, are experiencing stress. Absolutely. And especially in the ages when we're already decreased um, ability to absorb our nutrients. So, you know, after the age of 40, our digestive system is not working as optimally as it did, again, like I said, when we were 20. So now we're looking at things like how do we optimize our digestion to be able to absorb the nutrients properly? Well, that's, that, that's, uh, that's great information. Thank you very much, Cheryl, for joining, uh, joining us today. Uh, I'm Teresa Osman, and uh, thank you for, uh, for being here. Well, there you have it, another episode of Wise Folks. 
And the wisdom in this particular show is that food is really more than just important. It's a great way for us to reconnect if we haven't been connected for a while. No matter where you go on Vancouver Island, there's a place where you can start to learn about food in a totally different way. Make sure you give it a go. We'll see you next time on Wise Folks. I walked with the world for a many a mile. Life was fun for a little while. As I got older, how could I smile? How could I be happy for long? I met a wise folk the other day, told me to live in a happy way. Now I'm walking in the good old way, and I'm greeting life with a song. Something is missing in my heart today I had to stop and rest a while Not really sure what I need How was I to find what's wrong? I met a wise folk the other day Told me to live in a happy way Now I'm walking in the good old way And I'm greeting life with a song I'm greeting life with a song.